I swore to myself that I would never do this again, and yet here we are. <laughs> I picked up the size 50 cotton crochet thread again and smaller than one millimeter crochet hooks, and I created the lace yoke to the top that I'm wearing right now. So if you want to stick around for this video, then you will see exactly how I created this top. I was browsing patterns online from antique crochet books, as one does, and I found an instructional book on how to do Irish crochet lace, and I absolutely loved it. There are some very aspirational pieces in there, but I thought that maybe I could work through it to learn how to do Irish crochet lace in the first place and see how feasible it would be for me to make some of my absolute dream pieces. I do know how to crochet and I have some background in crochet, but I never really tried any of the more difficult crochet lace or Irish crochet with padding, so I decided to start from the beginning of this instructional book and learn from there. As some of you may know, there is a difference between the US and UK crocheting terms, so just to be sure I understood which ones they were asking me to do, I sat down and I knit a sample of all of the crochet term explanations in the beginning of this magazine. I'm glad that I did because this book did assume UK crocheting terms, and it got me a little bit more in practice with what they wanted. I did all this practice with crochet thread number 10 just to have a little bit more bulk to my stitches and not painfully work on tiny thread size yet. I also worked on all of the beginner medallions that the book had laid out and I came up with some pretty fun yet slightly wonky pieces. When I send out my letters to my patrons, I usually like to include a little bit of a sample of what I've been working on, whether it be knitting or crochet, and this month I decided to include these slightly wonky crochet samples in those letters, so for those of you who received them, I hope that you enjoyed the sample of my work even if it was a little bit wonky. <laughs> Once I felt like I had a pretty good idea of what I was doing for the example pieces in the Irish crochet, I decided to sit down and get to work on the yoke portion. On the left is my size 50 crochet thread, which will be the main bit of the pattern pieces, and on the right is number 10 crochet thread, which will serve as the padding. For my yoke slash collar area of my top, I chose a design for a collar that was in the exact same book that is made up of three separate motifs. I started with what seemed like the simplest one, which was the flower, and it started by instructing me to wrap the padding around a set of two matches. Once you have all of your padding wrapped around your matches, you can take it off the matches and join in your working yarn. So for me, this was crochet thread size 50, although in the instruction booklet, it does say that all of the example pieces that are pictured were done with either crochet thread size 70 or 100, which is even thinner and even smaller than what I was using, which I just can't imagine. The first round though for this flower piece was a set of double crochet, that's UK double crochets, around the central padding to create a center circle. After you create those double crochets to go around the central circle and you add a few picots in there as well, it's time to create larger loops that sit between each of the little picot edges. You'll have six picot edges and then I believe also six matching larger loops that you form with chains to go around them. The flower motifs are made up of only three rows, so it seems to go quite quickly when you work on them. I timed myself and I think it took between 30 and 45 minutes for me to finish one of these flowers, although I think most of the time was spent with me struggling <laughs> to manipulate such small yarn and a tiny, tiny hook. I think I might have been able to go a little bit faster had I used slightly bigger thread. And there you have it. After three rounds, you have one flower complete. For my collar slash yoke design, I decided to follow the pattern example and create eight of these flowers. The next design element I decided to work on was the scroll. I admit I had to read through these instructions a minimum of probably 20 times to try to understand what it was asking me to do before I just sat down with my crochet thread and hook and decided to do exactly what the instructions said before it finally made some sort of sense to me. The unique thing about this scroll is I thought the way that it would be created is that you create the thick outer line first and then you fill in the center pieces. But in reality, you're actually creating the inside border first where you create that little loop on the end. Then you create the filling area that goes around and in the middle of your thicker portions here. I hope that kind of makes sense. I'm not exactly sure. I don't know if anyone is going to try to emulate this pattern either, but if you are, just know that you're working from the inside out. <laughs> 
to make this scroll. Once you've completed those filler stitches or what you might call background stitches in the middle of your scroll, it's then time to complete the outer border of the scroll. This is done using the padding for the crochet stitches around the border to make it nice and thick, but then you also add kind of three extra flourishes. The instructions say that you should add these three little extra double picot decorations, but if you look at the image, I think there's four. I decided to add only three though because that seemed to work very nicely with the size of the scroll that I made. After pulling everything tight, I was then absolutely finished with the first scroll piece. The last piece that I worked on was the center piece of this yoke. I wanted to make sure I had as much practice as possible before I even attempted this kind of three leaf clover design, trico design, I'm not exactly sure what you would call it. I think I could have been a little bit neater in my execution. I have a little bit of problem with the tension when it comes to very large crochet stitches, but I still think that this one turned out okay. I like reading through the pattern instructions and seeing exactly how these are constructed. You start with one of your clover leaves and then work around in a circle until you create all of your clover leaves and then you add together the stems. Once you finish crocheting all of the leaves and stems for this centerpiece, you're not quite done yet because you still have to add decorative center circles to each one of your three leaf clovers, as well as weave in and secure all the ends. But since this is the centerpiece piece, it means I only have to do this one time and I am also now completely finished with all the motifs that I need to create my collar. In total, I crocheted three separate motifs, eight of the flower, two of the scroll, and one of the centerpiece three leaf clover. All right, so while I've been working on the crochet pieces, I've also been cutting out and sewing together the base blouse pattern for this top that I'm going to add the crochet or Irish crochet lace to. I wanted to make this before I made the final crochet lace piece to make sure that I have the pattern piece right. I wanna make sure that I'm making the lace collar or neck piece in the right shape so that it fits well. So this is the top. I now want to make four more or 10 more because I think this is so cute and flattering. I don't have any closures on it, which is why I'm holding it closed with one hand, but look at this. Oh my gosh, I love this top so much. It's so comfortable. I created a template piece and I pinned it on just to make sure, well, <laughs> just to make sure that it fit correctly. So now I have it all traced out onto my calico and I have my Irish crochet pieces ready to stitch on. That's what I'm gonna be moving on to next. I've never tried anything like that bit before, but I have read the directions a few times over and I have seen examples of other unfinished lace pieces on the pink or light blue calico that the book describes. Okay, so here is the bit of calico that I've used. You can see the shape of the collar lace piece that I need to make in the blue outline, and the Irish crochet pieces that I've already finished laid out kind of on top of it approximately where I want it to go. As the instructions explain in the book, the first step is you have to take your Irish crochet pieces, these little motifs, and sew them on strongly to your calico. So I'm checking back in again after I have sewed all the Irish crochet pieces face down onto my cambric. Oh, you tell did you help? Did you help? Oh my goodness. Wow, very helpful, thank you. Uh, so if you can see kind of past Nutella's paws here, I just sewed them all face down onto the cambric. You can't see through Nutella's head, I'm sorry, but she very much wants my attention. Um, we are going to crochet the border. I'll probably try to show that as best as I can uh, once I give Nutella some well-deserved attention.
Here we are, sometime later, much later than I had anticipated, and I am finally finished with the outside pico edge for the collar, and all that is left, I make that sound like it's not a lot, but it's probably more than I think, is to fill in the collar with the pico filling. And then after that, it's to cut this free, and then we're done. Well, then I actually have to sew it on to my top and put the closures on my top, but this seems like the biggest piece of work to me personally, so I'm very excited for that point. So let's start on the background filling. Oh man, sorry for the absolute wrinkly mess that this color has turned out to be. I thought that I could maybe finish the filling within a week. Oh, we also have a guest dog today, so you might see her snout a few times in this. I thought I could finish this filling by the end of the week, but I just wasn't able to, so I decided that I'm going to take a little bit longer time and finish filling in the rest of these background stitches this week. So I know you had to wait a little bit extra for this video to come out, but hopefully it's worth it in the end with the lace collar or yoke area of this top and how it turns out. So I'm going to continue working on the background stitches here and uh, then take the time to finish that up with the rest of the top. I'll keep you updated on how I progress. Many hours later and very late at night, I finished filling in all of the background stitches for my lace piece and I am just beyond excited with how it looks. The fill in portions took a lot longer than I was thinking, but I'm glad that I took the time to do it right and I can't wait to finish it off so I can attach it to my top. The next step that I have to do is to remove the lace piece that I created from the calico and as per the instructions, I'm going to cut off the stitches at the back side of this so I don't risk accidentally nicking the lace at all. So hopefully this will protect my lace at the front if I'm only cutting the stitches at the back to remove my lace piece. Is it possible to love a piece even more after it's been detached from the calico? Because I definitely do. I think this looks amazing. Though you might notice a few tendrils laying around here. So I'm gonna spend probably the next few hours securing and sewing in these ends so that I can then attach it to my top. Now that all of the ends are sewn in and secured, it is time to find the top that I sewed a few weeks ago so that I can attach my lace yoke to it. However, I ran into a little bit of a problem when trying to do this step. Yeah, exciting that I finished the lace portion of the collar. I've been working on it for so long though and I have been moving my work around so much and having to like readjust everything because everything has to be a multi-use space here that I I honestly don't know what happened to the top that I sewed, that I showed you. I don't know where I put it. I guess let me show you where I've been looking and what I've been looking through because the state of my crafting area and my craft closet could use some organizational help. But this is where I store all of my crafting things and it's um, oh my gosh, not the best organized space. Is it here? I think this is the fabric that I used to make it. Here's the elastic I used and cut. I feel like I'm finding clues. Like I found the material that I used to cut out for the top. This is the elastic that I used around the waist. Am I getting closer? Wait, was it in the laundry? Because it had blue marks on it. So maybe I washed it and it's still in my unfolded laundry pile. Oh, that's embarrassing. This is like just a series showing you how unorganized my closet is and how little I like folding my clothes. Let me check that, maybe it's there. I just tore the closet apart and it's not in there. I legitimately don't know where else it could be. I'll let you know when I find it, hopefully. The last place I was expecting to find this, I sat down to go to my computer and I look at my monitor and I notice a bit of white fabric and what is it except for my top that was uh, for some reason stuffed behind my monitor. I feel so much better having found the top that I sewed a while back. So I can now attach the finished lace yoke to the top. I'm going to hand sew the lace to the yoke after I pin it on. We are reaching 
the finishing stages of this piece because the only thing that's left after adding the yoke is adding the closures to the back. Also slightly unrelated, but you might notice or hear Nutella playing in the background. I think we're gonna have to do another, a little bit of a play break with Nutella to make sure she is nice and entertained before I go sit down for some calm hand sewing. And I thought that I would show a really fun new game that I've started playing with her, which is our game of hide and seek. So first we gotta get Nutella to wait for us somewhere and sit and stay. Okay, stay. All right, let's go hide. Nutella. You found me. Nice. I hope you enjoyed watching that as much as we enjoyed playing it, right Nutters? Yeah, we had a good time. Now that Nutella has been thoroughly entertained, it's time to hand sew on the lace yoke to my top. I don't always do a ton of hand sewing, but as I'm working on this, and as I'm working on this like piece of <laughs> thread that I cut off, I'm reminded of a few comments that I've gotten in the past which say I should use shorter lengths of thread because it's easier to work with and less likely to get knotted. Should be like the length of your forearm, something like that, versus me, I'm sitting over here doing this. <laughs> I think I saw this in relation to cross stitch. It just reminds me of you know directions that say, cut off 18 inches of thread and then there's me with just a huge amount. I would rather deal with the knots than <laughs> uh, starting and stopping the thread that I'm using. After attaching the lace yoke to the top and adding all the fastenings in the back, this top was completely finished. such a good time making this top. I think I told my friends that this is probably my favorite item I have ever made. I love the combination of sewing and crocheting, fiber crafts, and everything like that, especially historically or vintage inspired is my absolute favorite. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in more videos like these, please feel free to subscribe and I will see you all again next time as I work on some more historically related fiber crafts.